So, guys, like we all know that the latest strategy being used by the Tinubu's government is to weaken opposition parties. Guess what? They've planted all kinds of turmoil in different opposition parties so that they can easily win come 2027. We know that Nigerians are not getting any dividends of democracy from this government. The only strategy they have is to weaken oppositions so that they can use, you know, all their dogs like we've seen in this cartoon, you know, police, army, uh, the, the, the judiciary, INEC, and all of them, you know, to use them easily to win elections. So, guys, there is deep crisis in the PDP. And as it stands now, PDP cannot win any election because of how divided they are. Guess what? Wike is using the acting chairman of the PDP in destabilizing the party. I tell you, PDP is gone. And Ugo Chinyere is raising alarm. He has been shouting and also on this platform, Arise TV, he granted an interview where he narrated deeply how... The oppositions have been weakened by this government using court ruling, court judgment, just like what we saw even in the Labour Party. You can imagine Abure, whom even INEC said they don't recognize the convention that Abure held. All of a sudden, a court ruling has come out, you know, saying that Abure is the authentic chairman of the Labour Party. So, guys, I want you to take your time and watch this video. Listen to what Mr. Gochini said in this video, just to know that there is crisis ahead of, you know, ahead of this nation. Honestly, 2027 election may not even hold because as it stands now, we don't have the strong parties that want to contend with the ruling party. Take a look. Put the NWC today. Mm -hmm. The only people or the arrowheads of this, what they call PDP, APC, you know, mixing PDP and APC interests together, APC, PD, like whatever they call it, mm -hmm. is Damago, the national secretary, the uh, uh, the national organizing secretary. These are the three main kingpin, with one or two other. The majority so of I the members. I want to believe that Damago was at the meeting where he was suspended. Of course, the party had a na normal national working committee meeting. And remember, under Article Twenty Nine, even if he refuses to summon a meeting, two third of majority of members of the NWC will get the meeting convened, going by the provision. This, so these people have over seven members. That's why they're in majority. Have you seen anybody come to speak for, 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 for Damag? That's why they're appointing somebody, the Deputy Public Secretary and the Deputy National Legal Advisor. On what authority is he doing that? He has been removed. It was because after his removal that he now went to do the counter-attack of saying he's suspending the Public Secretary and the Legal Advisor. And it's important to understand why is he targeting the Public Secretary and the Legal Advisor. What? The Public Secretary issued a statement, if you remember, that the local government election was held in River State. Remember? Mm -hmm. yeah. That the pro weak element never liked. The Legal Advisor was the one who filed the process in court to discontinue that case. That would have seen the Pronwike group acquire legitimacy to continue their futile attempt to impeach the governor. So that is why we, uh, the Pronwike group led by Damago targeted those two. But it was already belated because at that moment he was doing that. He has been suspended from the party and Yayari Ahmed Mohammed has already been appointed. By next week, you will see them at, uh, at the NWC meeting and you see the total number of NWC members that are solidly behind. So, so, so you say the, the Fair High Court uh, uh, ruling uh, asking, quashing the suspension of Damago. Uh, came late. He didn't question anything. They went to court in their usual way of seeing themselves and was looking for an injunction to stop the Magu party from holding an equity to appoint an acting uh, chairman. But what happened today and yesterday was a case of anti-party. It's not a life immunity that if you, if, you, if you get a court order, you will never be questioned for any act of anti-party in the party. So there was a grave allegation of anti-party, which was brought before the NWC, and the NWC suspended him. That is different from the order he later got after that suspension had been carried. So what he should do, if he disagrees with the members of the decision of majority of NWC members, he can now file an action in court seeking to quash the NWC meeting where he was suspended from the party. So he can't say there's a general order somewhere that, that acted uh, as if you know what will happen well, in the future. It looks like, um, uh, you know, this whole, this idea of anti-party activities has become a general, or you know, some kind of generic uh, term. But politicians today, Nigerians are looking with uh, a lot of um, shock as to how, you know, you all have redefined party politics, where a politician is in party A, but he's influencing, uh, you know, his activities in uh, party B and party C. In the case of River State, for example, you've been a frontline, uh, you know, uh, stakeholder or participant, if you like. In the out, in the both in the process of the local government uh, elections and the outcome, 
what exactly is going on? It's a very because simple Nigerians seem to be confused. The PDP was waiting and excited about participating in the local government. The same thing I'm telling you about. Mm. Damago allow the PDP structure as recognized and agreed at the next meeting that those who were the occupant of that office before the expiration should emerge as caretaker. And then since there was a court order, those people are still in office. They continue to act pending the conduct of a substantive World Congress and LUG and State Congress in River State. But you went in the night and said there was an expert order that nobody saw. And allowed Prunwike members who are APC members and appointed them as members of the party. So what you are expecting, were you expecting them to hand over the structure to those APC members? And more importantly, because of the court order that did not recognize that purported uh, Congress, PDP decided not to participate in that election, especially the Prunwike group. They are by denying our party the opportunity to participate in the election because Damagui is recognizing those imposters and those imposters have said they cannot participate. They were the cause of the problem. They didn't allow us. That's why the governor said that he's the biggest loser because the party was not allowed to participate. So, Representative Ogochinyere, in all of this, you're fighting for the life of the PDP. Uh, help us. Where are the elders of the PDP, former presidents, uh, former senators, former lawmakers, mm -hmm. and even the board of trustees in all of this. It's very painful, first of all, that those who have benefited from PDP at this trying moment that party is struggling to come up from the hood of a group of people who, have not, who doesn't have the interest of the party at heart are keeping silent. Some are keeping silent maybe because they have benefited from the actors in the past. Some are keeping si silent because they don't want to be dated with, because what is happening is a low game. It's like it's something that is played by thoughts. Because what are we fighting over? Against ourselves, against our own party. So most elders feel that these people who are running this show are shameless, so they don't want to get uh, involved. But we thank God that the courageous members of the NWC have stepped forward and that the BOT have called for a ceasefire. But it goes beyond calling for a ceasefire. We know who is the problem. We know those who, who are the problem. Who is the problem? Of course. The problem is very simple. It is the Prunwike group, where you have Nwike, where you have Governor Caleb of Plateau, where you have Governor Mackindor for you, where you have Governor Fintry of uh, Adamo State, where you have Damagu, where you have uh, Samuel Lanyawa, and all those other people who believe that if you pin down PDP for the APC, maybe APC in return will allow them to win their own election to the detriment of survival of the party. So we know those people who are encouraging this thing. So right. what the elders need to do is to be decisive at the next meeting to deal with these issues. What is, people, okay, you watch them on your TV, or Tom, for instance, we can, for instance, we tell you that they are working for the re-election of the president. And then they are struggling party structure with us. That is okay. all political madness. It is indeed political insight. The beginning of the end of uh, Nigeria's uh, once upon a time biggest political party. Yes and no. Yes, in the sense that those who are fermenting this trouble want this to be the beginning of the journey to eternal political abyss. And know for some of us who are advocating that the party must be rescued, this opens a window of opportunity to return the party back to that path of stability. What exactly, what are the opportunities uh, that lay ahead you know, for uh, the PDP? We'll, we'll come to that, but let, let's narrow it down to this uh, removal or ouster of uh, Damagung, the acting uh, national uh, chairman of the party. Exactly which what instrument was used in his removal? Because uh, according to Justice Lifu, uh, only at a national convention that should hold uh, the December 2025 or so, allows for the removal and replacement of a national chairman and the executive as a whole. The, what did you rely on to Yes, to there's, no, there's no conflict with uh, the judgment that, which I don't think if you have seen a copy that they say was delivered online or Zoom or something. That has to do with an action that took place yesterday. An action that took place yesterday was a, a fresh action which borders on a grave case of anti-party activity of a national chairman who writes letter in favor of APC and said a case that if it is successful will see the impeachment of a PTV governor should go on. It was those charges that was brought before him by invoking the provision of Article 57 and Article 58 which gives the NEC the exclusive power to move against a member of the NEC. And they invoke that by first invoking Article 29, which gives the NWC the power to act on behalf of NEC in times of emergency. 
this art of anti-party activity that goes to the very foundation of burying the party. There's nothing that can be very urgent more than a national chairman of a political party who writes a letter that will give victory to APC and remove his PDP governor. So they invoke Article 29 that gives them power to summon such an emergency meeting on behalf of the NEC. And then they invoke Article 57 and 58, which gives the NEC the power to intervene in such grave anti-party situation. It is on that ground that they now resolved. They have not you know, removed him from the party. They just suspended him and referred his matter to the disciplinary committee and appointed uh, Yayari Ahmed Mohammed as the acting national chairman. And the reason is that Yayari is from North, which where the position was zoned for, but not from North uh, uh, Central. But after the suspension, he's the highest ranking officer. And then they made him acting chairman for the purpose of convening and leading this party to that great neck meeting that everybody is expecting on the 24th, during which the North Central which is the rightful position, going by the provision of Article 47 sub C, will now bring a substantive national chairman. But for some uh, close watchers and, and even some members of your party, they think that uh, you're cherry picking uh, those uh, to penalize when mm. you talk about anti party activities, knowing, going by what we saw in the last election, uh, where even the uh, minister of uh, the FCT. Uh, seem to be untouchable. So why Damagun, while others are uh, sitting pretty, still within the PDP? Well, the, the, the art of betrayal that the FCT minister has been carrying against the party for the last one year was possible because he had a national chairman, an acting national chairman, and secretary, and some few others who have been politically compromised. In short, they are like PA and agents of the minister who is working in an APC government. They take instruction from That is why it was so difficult. You can imagine for the national chairman of the party to go as far as handing, there was a court order for them not to do a state congress in reverse. But he went ahead and did that state congress. And the supporters of the city minister were dashed the structures of the party. And these are people who have already played their allegiance to the APC agenda of winning in 2027. So it, it, it's so painful that the national chairman sits in a meeting encourages people who have vowed that their party cannot win an election at the next general election. And in return, they are now keeping him in office with all those expected applications flying from one court or the other. And again, you need to understand, what are we fighting over? Article 45 said, if there is a vacancy, the deputy chairman emerges. And then there will be a neck meeting under Article 47, which mandate, Sha is the word there, appoint an acting chairman from the zone or area where the former occupant originated. Now, all of a sudden, people are now going to court, looking for an injunction that will not say an, a deputy national chairman can contribute to be a national chairman till 2025, 2026. So these are right. the things that have brought us to this point. Yeah, before we even get to all of that, uh, exactly where and who were the people who came together and sat as, is it an NWC or... The or National Working Committee. ...to decide that Damagun and the others... So, guys, you have seen it for yourself no. that the only thing you Tinubu knows how to do now is to weaken opposition parties. They've planted their people in all these parties just to cause trouble, to cause turmoil. You can imagine in, in PDP, in River State, they have like two different groups. Those loyal to Wiki, those loyal to Fubara. Then when you come to the Labour Party, we've seen Arab and B, and Papa, those that worked for the APC, in the last election, they've all gone to embrace Abure, and now all of a sudden, Abure that used to say, "Oh, the Labour Party ticket is reserved for Peter Obi," has now openly thrown the pack, the, the ticket open to everybody. And guess what? There are speculations that they want to give, you know, all these tickets to the APC members, Nigerians. What these politicians and all these, uh, you know. Politically minded people cannot do, does not exist. So you can imagine to that point that they are planning to give, you know, uh, tickets that is meant for Labour Party to APC members, people who will give them more money, who must have bought them over. So one is just imagining how did the, uh, the High Court in Abuja came to this point. Abure, whom the uh, INEC has said they don't recognize the convention that Abure held. And all of a sudden, a court from somewhere is saying that Abure is the authentic chairman of the Labour Party. So, guys, these are some of the questions that one keeps asking. When is this country going to do things rightly? When are we going to follow rule of law? When is our judiciary going to be respected by reason of some of the judgment they are going to be given on? Why is it that doing the right thing is so difficult in this country? 
It's so difficult even among those who call themselves leaders. I mean, people don't care about what others are saying about them. They only keep doing the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing without considering the consequences of all what they are doing. So, guys, these are some of the things that we keep saying that on that Tinubu, Nigeria is finished. On that Tinubu, Nigeria is gone. On that Tinubu, Nigeria may not recover again. I tell you, Buari was saying that, that you are going to miss him. And people thought he was joking. Now it's becoming clear that people are now missing Buari because of the kind of leadership that this government is offering the Nigerian people. So guys, let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell. Please give this video a like so that YouTube can recommend it to others. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you.